Hi, it's been a pleasure to organize NAS at 105 and bring together people who knew Nin intimately. I didn't know her personally, but when I discovered her writings as a young reader, I felt as if I did know her personally and even intimately. Many people feel the same way. Nin was interested in personal connection and creativity. There are endless stories of how diary passages, her lectures, or even personal conversations with her altered people's lives. Her name has inspired Perfume and her affairs, the first NC-17 movie, Henry and June. But who was she? Anais Nin was born in a suburb of Paris on February 21st, 1903. Her parents separated due to her father's affairs, and Nin's mother decided to take the children to America to start a new life. On the trip to the U.S. at age 11, Nin started keeping a diary as a letter to her father. The diary was a way for the young girl to document life in a new place. She was self-educated after grammar school and worked as a model to help bring money into her single-parent household. Her first published writing was at the age of 15, imploring the importance of owning a liberty bond. She wrote in the daily diary for the remainder of her life. There are 69 volumes of the diary. During the last 30 years of her life, Nin kept writing, but used file folders instead of bound notebooks. The original writings comprise of more than 35,000 pages. The diary was a confidant, record keeper, secret keeper, and a lifelong artistic endeavor. In 1966, at the age of 63, Nin had the diaries commercially published. They documented her emotional journey as an intellectual woman, artist, and of those around her. The diaries were a commercial success. Being published in the midst of a sexual revolution, Nin soon became in demand to speak at colleges and universities. She was the darling of the lecture circuit and received hundreds of letters from fans, all of which she answered personally. Nin married banker Hugo Gillier at the age of 20. Hugo's job relocated the young couple to France. Before publishing the diaries was even a consideration, Nin published, at the age of 28, the nonfiction book, D.H. Lawrence, An Unprofessional Study. The book's reception disappointed Anais, and she divided, her time, she divided her attention briefly between writing and pursuing a career as a dancer. During this time, she met Henry Miller, wrote fiction, and sought out analysis. In 1934, Nin returned to the U.S. and briefly started a psychoanalysis practice. Nin was a well-read writer with an incredible work ethic. Nin's writings progressed as she published 15 books during her lifetime, not including the seven published diaries and a book of interviews. Most of her books were avant-garde novels of the French surrealistic style. In the 30s, when there was little interest in her writings, Nin published a printing press and printed uh, the books herself sometimes spending 12 to 14 hours a day standing at the foot-operated press. At one point, needing money, Nin wrote erotica for a dollar a page to an unknown collector. These writings were to be published uh, posthumously as the bestsellers Delta, Venus, and Little Birds. These erotic stories brought more attention and acclaim than even the diaries. Nin's artistic achievements were great or her sensational private life has seemed to eclipse it in the public eye. Many details of her complicated life were omitted from the published diaries, only to be revealed after, their, after the death of her husband Hugo in 1985. Details of Anais Nin's full life have been published in the unexpurgated diary series, A Journal of Love. One of, one of the biggest details omitted was the presence of a husband giving readers the impression that Anais was self-sufficient and self-sustaining. Then there were the affairs. She had a long affair with Henry Miller, even financially supporting him at times. Had an affair with the political revolutionary, Gonzalo Moore, had an um, and with the book reviewer Edmund Wilson, which was actually after the book review, uh, after he <laughs> reviewed her book. Um, she had Two, affair, uh, two affairs with her therapist, Renee Allendy and Otto Rank, a highly unethical practice for men in their situation. As, 
Aside from the affairs, there was also casual sex. There was casual sex with men and sometimes women. There was drug experimentation and abortion. In 1947, men met Rupert Pohl in New York and proceeded to have a lifelong intimate relationship with him. She even married Rupert while still being married to Hugo. Neither men knew about the other, and men divided her time for over 20 years in six-week six week increments between being in New York with Hugo and L.A. with Rupert. Her bi-coastal life, love affairs, and lies to cover them up were kept in a recipe box that she labeled the lie box. <laughs> In this unconventional life, one situation is highly debated. A paternal incestual affair when Nin was 33 and her father was 55. Nin's writings of this time in diary books numbered 37 through 46 have been scrutinized and we're left wondering if she was trying through sex to recapture the attention of a father absent for 20 years or if she used sex as a means of revenge or if the writings were simply a psychological exercise as she worked through her childhood abandonment. This month, Nin would have been 105. She spent the latter part of her life living in Silver Lake. During this time, she befriended many young women who saw her as a mentor and friend. I'm pleased two of them are here with us. We will also hear recollections from someone who knew Nin for over 40 years and hear from a family member and now the executor of her estate. Nin was a pioneer, believing her emotional experience was worthy of daily documentation, that love affairs were to be recorded and examined. She believed in her writings enough to purchase a printing press and print books herself. Even though there were glaring omissions in the diaries published during her lifetime, it was still a bold act to reveal oneself so intimately on the page. Tonight's program does not seek out to unify a profile of Anais Nin. Its aim is to give a clearer picture of the complex woman and writer. The order of our speakers tonight will be Tristine Rayner, one of the leaders in the study of autobiogra autobiography and a confidant of Anais. Eric Lloyd Wright, brother-in-law to Anais through her second husband, Rupert, and now the executor of her estate. Bibi and Adam Barron, and Bibi was a friend with Anise in San Francisco, New York, and LA. And our last speaker for the evening will be Dina Metzger, writer, healer, and counselor, and very close friend to Nen. So to start off our program, it's a pleasure to welcome our first speaker, Tristine Rayner. Thanks. 